Amen. Would you rise to your feet as we go over our Sabbath day ritual? This is the Sabbath unto us. Amen. 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 And so let us go through the Psalm of Protection this morning, our 91st Psalm. Amen. Together in unison, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, <clears throat> of the Almighty, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth that noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways." They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. The summary of the commandments say, Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So readeth the law. Why don't you greet your neighbor on each side of you, let him know you're happy to see them this morning. Amen. All hail, Church of God and Saints of Christ. Is it well with thee? It is well with my soul. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Church of God and Saints of Christ, giving honor to God, who is the head of my life this morning. Amen. And to Jesus Christ, who is the Savior of my life this morning. And to the Holy Spirit, who is the guider of my life. Giving honor to Bishop C.L. Hendricks. Amen. Amen. We, we got to work on that a little bit now. We got company. We got company here. So, so when, when, we, when we say we happy and give honor to the leader, the whole church should say in one unison voice. Amen. All right. So I'm going to try it again. Giving honor to God. Got to say more about God than the leader. To the Holy, to Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Giving honor that is due and recognition to our leader, Bishop C.L. Hendricks. And to the Chancellor of the Church, Bishop Frank G. Henson. I give honor to all the ministry in their places and to the grandmother Sarah and the grandfather Abraham in his absence. To all the choir officials and all my brothers and sisters in Christ, Amen. I am indeed glad to be present this morning 
I wanted to take off running this morning, but I said I had to pace myself because I'm getting older. I don't want nobody to think that that's all I know how to do is run around. But when I was thinking, when I was thinking about the 91st Psalm this morning, church, I, 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 was, I was just moved by the scripture. Uh, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high. My habitation. <laughs> Sometimes we say it so fast we don't even realize what we're saying. Because I have made the Lord my refuge. I, I, I'm going too fast already. I want, I want, I want to say this. That, that, that in, in, in moments of despair. When friends couldn't give me the answer that I needed. I'm on the phone oftentimes with my brothers. Brother. Uh, brother. Uh, I call him Brother Hendrix when we're on the phone, when we're on the phone. I call him Brother Harris when we're, when we're on the phone. I call him Brother Cook when we're on the phone. When they couldn't give me what I needed, when they couldn't soothe my heart from what I was troubled with, I look to the word and it says, listen, Jay, uh, St. Laurie, I got this promise. Jay, who has made God his refuge. And sometimes I've got to remind myself that God is my refuge and strength. He's a very present help in time of trouble. Where can I run to when I have nowhere else to go? Who can I call upon when there is no one else that will be a friend? And I find myself running to God in the midst of my struggles and in the midst of my anxieties and my worries. I have to remind myself, I have made the Lord my I've never walked alone. And although the struggle may seem tough and the mountains may seem up in the morning, I make God. I recognize that God is my habitation. So where I. that there's got to be a place that I live outside of my home outside of what I'm peace and if there's nowhere else we can go in this world we ought to be able to go home then in your home ah. that, that the Lord dropped in my spirit because I've always gone into the next verse home sunny circle but God is saying if we have to look at the uh, uh, peace in God being my refuge and my habitation, then my dwelling place must be that place in God. Death shall ever be able to separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. I interrupt my dwelling place. The bills may come to my home, but it never interferes with my dwelling place. My wife was saying, we got these bills before we left. I said, leave them in the home. We're going to our dwelling place. I ain't worried about no bills when we get home. I'm in my dwelling place. I ain't worried about what they say about me at home. I'm in my dwelling place. I don't know about you, but I ain't worried about the naysayers right now. I'm in my dwelling place. His name is Jesus. Oh, so sweet I know his name is Jesus. No other name I know. The Rock. In the wilderness, his name is Jesus. He's the water in a dry place, his name is Jesus. He's the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon. He's the wonderful God. Master is his name. And so this morning, I'm grateful to God because I found my dwelling place. I don't know about you. I hope I'm helping somebody today. That if you don't know where your peace comes from, I invite you to look at verse 8, verse 9 and 10. That God is your refuge. It's a place you can run to and hide. Not only that, he's a habitation. It's a place you can dwell and reside in. And no evil will befall you there. Neither shall any plague. You know what a plague is, don't you? Sickness. Yeah, things that are just nuisance in your life. You can find solace in your habitation and in your dwelling place in Christ Jesus. Listen, we're so glad to be in the presence this morning of all of our brothers and sisters 
all those who have traveled both far and near. Thank God you made it. The trials that you were going through, God had to show us just what to do. We made it. Another year has passed and we are here to rejoice. I'm so glad that we have with us Pastor Marty and Kim Neal from It Is Written Deliverance Ministries. Come on, put your hands together. Do we remember that song, Sweet Promised Land? Do you remember that song, St. Sherry? We want to make them feel welcome. Mm-hmm. Promise land, my happy home. I glad the Lord mm-hmm. in my life to see. Promise land, my, my happy home. Oh, oh, oh. Promise land. Come on, can we make the pastor feel good in the house? We want them to know they're welcome in the promised land. Come on. Everybody, come on your feet and come on, let's put our hands together. Boom, boom, boom. Mm-hmm. His spirit, my life to see. Promised land, my happy. Promised land, oh, promised land, my happy home. Promised land, my happy home. The Lord has. Spared my life to see Promised land My happy home One more time Boom, boom, boom Promised land my My happy home Boom, boom, boom Promised land my My happy home That the Lord has Spared my life to see One more time This land my My happy This is for you, Pastor Boom, 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 promise land, my, my happy home. Ooh, promise land, my, my happy home. I'm so glad the Lord has spared my life to see. Promise land, my happy home. Yes, sir, put your hands together. And we want to give the pastor, Marty and Pastor Kim, an opportunity just to greet the church and let them know that we're glad to see them. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. We are so happy to be in this atmosphere with Christ ruling and abiding. We are so happy just to be a guest here today, honored to be here. We, and we just have already gained so much love for this, this congregation and this leadership and its people. We're just glad to be here. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I didn't say praise me. I say praise the Lord this morning. For he is worthy to be praised. For the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. Our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, is worthy to be praised. Chief said he felt like running this morning, but I don't know about you, but I feel like running with you. Because I thank God my last night wasn't my last night. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. For in the Lord there's fullness of joy. Overwhelming joy, unspeakable joy. The world ain't give it to you, and the world can't take it away. Hallelujah. We live to die. We die to live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to learn. Y'all said, trust in the Lord. I trust in the Lord with all my heart and all my soul. I don't trust in my mom and my daddy. I trust in my Lord and Savior, Jesus, the Christ. The son of David, hallelujah. Hallelujah. To this mighty man of God, Bishop Hendricks, and to all the other honorable bishops and the elders and the deacons and all the worshipers. All the worshipers. See, some of y'all still worrying, but you don't know how to worship yet. Hallelujah. You need to learn how to worship and stop worrying. Because when you're worrying, it's a sin. Hallelujah. You're not trusting God. Hallelujah. 
You don't have to beg God, just believe God. In the name of Jesus, I'm just so full I could take off running. I thank God for this house. I thank God for the promised land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you understand that, it's going to pass some of y'all the promised land. Y'all keep worrying because you ain't trusting the promise. And on that right there, I want to say thank you for welcoming us this morning. I told my wife, I want to come get fed, and I'm already full. <laughs> I'm already full because out of my belly is flowing the rivers. Because we, he live, we live. When he got up, we got up. God bless you. God bless you. Pastor Marty and Pastor Kim, they fellowship here in this tabernacle. It is written, Deliverance Ministries. I think we ought to change the name to Church of God and Saints of Christ. It is written, Deliverance Ministries. Church of God, Saints of Christ, it is written, Deliverance Ministries. Because we're all one in Christ Jesus. We're all called to be saints. So therefore, you are my brother, because there is neither stranger, there is neither Greek, there is neither Jew, but we're all one in Christ Jesus. So this morning, we therefore deputize and now change and declare it is written <laughs> that we are one church. Now, whenever you decide to come to church, it's your business, but we're one church. Amen, amen. Again, we're, we're happy to have you with us. Make yourself at home. Amen. If you feel like running past you, lean over the banners and touch me on the shoulder. We'll run together, all right? Don't you worry about it, because I'm a runner. Amen. We're going to move into the service. We have a, another reading that we need to have this morning that's going to do some explaining of why we're here today. We did a lot of deliberating and, 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 and working hard to be able to present what we presented last night about why we were celebrating the Passover story. But today we want to talk about why we're in the days of unleavened bread. There is a difference. I know you say so glad to be at the Passover in days of unleavened bread, but there's a difference. And I want you to understand the difference. I'm going to call at this time uh, our CFO, Elder Daniel Baskins, who is going to bring to us this understanding and teaching this morning. Feast of Unleavened Bread serves as a memorial following the first Passover described in Exodus, the 12th chapter, verses 12 through 13, where Moses led the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage. These special days immediately following the Passover, depicting the next step in fulfilling God's master plan. First, God would deliver the children of Israel from 400 years of Egyptian rule, captivity, and suffering, which is the picture of God's redemption today from sin and death. The unleavened bread, also known as the bread of affliction, Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter, verses 3, is a symbol of the absence of leavening, sin, in the bread of our forefathers as they left Egypt, Egypt in haste. But the greater symbolism is Jesus Christ. Yeah. The Apostle Paul said, these days are a shadow of things to come. Yes, sir. The reality, however, is Jesus Christ. Yes. Colossians chapter 2, verses 17. Yes. The bread of life that was without sin, but became sin for us. What is leaven? Leaven evolves into a potent symbol of Israel's former existence as enslaved people living under Pharaoh 
and the Egyptians, a life directly opposed to God's will. The action of yeast causes food or drink to undergo a series of chemical changes that is referred to as fermentation. Yeast was commonly utilized throughout the biblical times as a leavening agent. Leaven gradu gradually, silently, and covertly causes an expansion in the dough and leavens the whole lump. That's right. That's right. Because of this, the dough will become airy. It, its influence spreads throughout until it has affected everything. Right. Consequently, Sin is a reflection of this process. Like yeast, sin influences, permeates, and invades the spiritual man. And when, it, when, it, when its work is finished, it brings forth death. God is drawing our attention, my brothers and sisters, to the fact that in the same way that he saved us from our servitude to sin, we are now to live a life that is sincere and, f and truthful, a life that is unleavened. For that to occur, there must be a reflection and an examination, period. Our house has to be in order. Having leaven in our hearts prevents us from worshiping God in spirit right. and in truth. The Apostle Paul spoke on an important spiritual principle. Don't you know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Yeah. 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse six. Saints, family, friends, do you, did you clean out your house? Yes, sir. Right. Did you sweep through your rooms of your heart yes, and sir. remove the crumbs of hatred? Wow. The crumbs of backbiting? Yeah. Wow. The crumbs of self-centeredness? The crumbs of disingenuous love towards your neighbor. The crumbs of pitting people against one another. The crumbs of manipulating scripture to suit your agenda. The crumbs of keeping division amongst the saints. Did you clean out your house? The Apostle Paul gave us a remedy for a messy house. Purge out, therefore, out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new leaven, new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, Say is sacrificed it, for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verses 7 through 8. The unleavened bread is called the bread of affliction in the Old Testament. This is the very bread that Jesus ha had in his hand when he said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Luke, cha Luke chapter 22, verse 19. It is called the bread of affliction because the Israelites came out of Egypt in haste. Making such an abrupt change was an affliction to their souls. Wow. The children of Israel coming out of Egypt is a picture of the believer coming out of sin. Coming out of sin is also an affliction of your souls, of, of our souls. Making a change in, one life, in one's lifestyle is disruptive and uncomfortable, but necessary. The unleavened bread speaks of the total sinlessness of Jesus Christ. As God's unleavened bread, Jesus took our sin so that we could be free from death. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. It was buried with him while symbolically leaven is removed from our physical houses Jesus removes the spiritual sin from our lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The days of unleavened bread are marked by our celebration of the Lord's, Lord's Supper, which is dedicated to remembering Jesus' Jesus's death, yeah. 
and suffering. Third key, unleavened bread and water for Christ's body and blood. St. Matthew, Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 through 28. In like manner, we must examine our lives to live in a way that honors and glorifies Christ's sacrifice until he's re he returns. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Yes, Be 
His house. Search this house. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Search this house, Lord. And see if I be worthy to receive your blessings. Now, this morning and for this Passover, the leader has given us a theme. We're about to soar. This is our year to soar. Someone say, this is my year to soar. And we thought it would be fitting if the ministry would come and encourage us to soar. Each morning we want to have a minister encourage us to soar. The bishop called me and said, Chief, the scripture is Isaiah, 40th chapter. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. I, I get excited on this scripture. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hold my peace. And the young men, the strong ones, they shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord. Do you know anything about it? They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. With wings like an eagle. I don't know if you feel like flapping your arms, but I feel like soaring up on wings of eagles this morning. You know, I was doing a little research after Bishop told me that, and I found out that we have enemies that will come and try to attack us. We have people that will try to stop us from soaring. Am I talking right? Do you know anybody that doesn't want to see you soar? They're like crows. When I was doing my research, you know crows, they're scavengers. And as powerful as the eagle is, Bishop, the crow tries to attack the eagle. You know what it does, St. Carmen? When it gets opportunity, it jumps on the eagle's back and it holds on. <laughs> I love it, Brother Rakim, because guess what? The eagle don't get mad. You know what I'm talking about. The eagle don't fight. The eagle just starts to soar higher and higher. Come here, Michelle Obama. When they go low, we go higher and higher. And what the eagle does, it flies to a height that the crow cannot exist in. And eventually, on its own accord, the crow drops off. Church, I want to tell you something. This, When they go low, we just go high. You just keep going high and your enemies will have to leave you alone. For they that wait upon the Lord while they're fussing and talking and naysaying about you shall renew in strength. Every time you talk about me, I'm getting stronger and stronger and stronger. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We've got the counselor of the church. Elder Eugene Horton, who's going to come and talk to us from 2 Corinthians, the 20th verse. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you be by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Go higher in God. Elder Eugene Horton will come and talk to us about SERVE, our acronym for Soar. He's going to use the letter S and speak to us about serve this morning. All right.
unto the church of God and saints of Christ. Yes, sir. Unto Bishop Hendricks. Amen. Amen. Yes. To Chief Evangelist. Bishop Evangelist, our visiting friends. Yes, sir. Right. I've been tasked with trying to encourage you As we go on our way. Yes, sir. But when I look around and see the things that we have accomplished so far this week, yes, sir. when I look at what we do from day to day, week to week, and especially when we come together in these national gatherings. How everyone serves, not just in these events, but all year long. Nearly everybody is on a committee. And they work separately, but they work together in the end. That the whole body can soar. Now, if you don't feel like you're soaring, yes, sir. just stick around. Come on, come on, come on. Because right. we're taking off. Yes, when we, one of the most obvious groups among us is the choir. Yes. And the way they perform. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. We surely soar. Yes. Amen. Whenever we come, we surely soar. If you don't feel like you're soaring, yes. when you listen to this choir, something's wrong. Because yes, yes, they certainly take us higher yes, and higher Amen. every time we Amen. come together. Yes, I can't go any further without mentioning the rabbinical staff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They certainly pulled it together yes, last night. Yes, Amen. The lamb was delicious. Amen. And I certainly enjoyed it. I almost licked the bowl. Lord, I, but I did put my finger around inside <laughs> and get a little of the last crumbs. But I thank God for Amen. the way we work together yes. in the service of God. Yes, sir. When we work together, that's how we serve God. Serve. Yes, sir. Wow. That's right. It's not about ourselves. No, sir. It's about the service of God. Scripture right. says us, Second Corinthians, the chief directed me there. 2 Corinthians of, uh, 5, 14, 15. Yes, sir. It says, for the love of Christ constraineth us. Come on, sir. Because we thus judged that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Yeah, that's right. And that he died for all that they which live, that's us, that's that's right. Right. That's right. did not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. So I thank God for blessing us to serve each other Amen. as we go on. Scripture tells us, uh, fourth chapter of Ephesians, and he gave some apostles and some prophets Come on. and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man yes, sir. and to the measure, the strategies of the fullness of Christ. Yes, sir. Isn't that a blessing? Yes, that we work together as we go on this way. He tells us again in the uh, 1 Corinthians 12 chapter, and God has set some in the church. First apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracle, gifts of healings, help, 
governments, yes, diversity yes, of the time. Yes, That's us. Yes, and we work together for the edifying of the body of Christ. I thank God for that. I thank God for it. Must be my favorite chapter in the book. Because you know, some point I'm going there. If you listen to me at all. 12th chapter, 1 Corinthians. But the manifestation of the Spirit to be in the 70th verse is given to every man to profit with all. Yeah. To one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Yeah. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one. And hath many members. And all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Greeks, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now has God set the members, every one of them, that's all of us, that's right. as it had pleased him. Yes, sir. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say, Unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Yeah. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, mm -hmm. upon these we bestow more abundant honor. Yeah. And our uncommonly parts have more abundant commonness. For our commonly parts have no need, but God has timbered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, mm -hmm. that there should be no schism in the body, no yes, but that the members should have the same yes, care, sir. one for another. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when we look around and see how we work together, like a well-oiled machine, and everything coming together in time and on time. We enjoy each other's company as we go on. Various ones are tasked with cleaning the tabernacle from time to time, and everybody pitches in as we ought to do. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. I have to stop here. For a moment. To thank you all for your prayers. And, 
and just thinking about me. You didn't have to do it. But I thank God for you all thinking about me. Bishop called me when I was in the hospital. Evangelist called me. Chief called me when I was in the hospital. Many of you I heard from, and I thank you so much for just thinking about me. Nobody. I appreciate it. I, I appreciate your thoughts and your prayers. Amen. 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 Everything to me. And I believe that helped me rise up. And I'm able to stand before you today. And so he says, and whether the one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ. And members in particular. Christ chose you. And he said it. You did not, he said it himself. You did not choose me. I chose you. Scripture says, many are called, but few are chosen. Again, he says, and God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongue. That's all of us. He didn't list everybody's position in this scripture. It would take a whole book. That's right, that's right. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gifts, Amen. and yet show I unto you a more excellent way, Amen. that we all work together. To help the body move freely and smoothly together. Amen. I truly thank God for you all. I thank God for the church of God and saints of Christ. Amen. I thank God for your time. I desire your praise.
Amen, amen. We want to give opportunity. We've been here on yesterday and we're here this morning and we didn't make opportunity for you to testify or for you to sing your song. So we're going to open it up for a brief moment in case someone has a burning testimony or a song they need to get out on today. Amen. I'm going to call on Deacon Jeffries. Deacon Jeffrey, Joseph Jeffries is in the house. And we know he, he can sing if he wants to. Amen. And we're also going to celebrate the Lord because we know Deacon Jeffries has been going through his own trial. But God has delivered him. The Bible said that God deliver his own out of all of their troubles. And we're believing God for his healing and for his restoration. So I'm going to ask the choir to give us a lively song while we call on Deacon Jeffries, who will preside over our devotional service at this time. Let Yeah. 
song of praises as they cross onto dry land. There's something about this church that just, just makes me happy. There's nothing like church. There's nothing like this church. Nothing like it. Unto the church of God and saints of Christ, I am indeed glad to be here this morning. Thank you, God. He has done so much for me. It seems like every time I get up here, He's good to me. This year's been a mess for me. It's been a mess. In and out of the hospital. Getting sick. Can't do nothing. Weak. But every time I take a breath, I have to thank God. I have to thank God. You know, when you're sick, you still, you get, you get sick and you, oh my God, Lord, please help me. And sometimes when you're feeling well, you still need to thank him. You still need to thank him, no matter what. When you're sick, your back hurting, you got a cold, no matter what, you still praise God. I have a new perspective on life. Sometimes you get pushed to do what's right. Sometimes you go fighting and, and pulling and tugging and screaming and hollering. But you still got to do what's right. 
I just thank God today that he's, he's blessed me. And I don't want to get up here and get to crying because it's ugly. But I thank you today. He's done so much for me. I'm still breathing. I'm still walking around. Maybe a little slow, but I'm still working. Sometimes you get up here and you have a whole lot to say. I have a whole lot to say, but I'm not going to blow y'all's ears up. I just want to tell you that God has blessed me like he's blessing you. You know, sometimes you just have to fight through your pain. And I said, well, as long as I'm breathing and still walking around, I'm going to be right here. Well, some people get sick, and the first thing they drop is church. I said, as long as I'm breathing, I'm going to be here. I love, I love church. It's, it's all in my bones. And you know, I, some of the younger saints don't really know the, the singing and, and, all the, and all the preaching and stuff that you get as you're young, you know, you don't pay attention to it. But as you start getting older, certain words start poking at you. Certain songs start working on you. Next thing you know, you're thinking about a whole other thing. Then you're humming all the time. Church music. Church songs. You at work humming church songs. They look at that shit, man, what you doing? I'm just humming. I'm just humming. But I'm so glad to be here today. And I'm not going to keep talking because I'm going to start rambling and then I'm going to start crying some more and it's going to be a mess up here. But what's going to happen is we're going to have a testimony service open so everyone can sing and testify to the glory of God. Tell God how good he is. He knows he's good, but he wants to hear it from you. Yeah. Testimony service is open. Sing, Doc.
will be first.
changes the differences, the way we feel, saints. All right. The way we feel. Yeah. Sometimes they are valid, mm -hmm. our feelings, that is. And they are real. Oh. I love the promised land. Yeah. My, my, my. If there's ever been an edifice that I have honored so much, it's this one. Yeah. I can't come enough. You can't ask me enough to come and get a package or let a service person in. I find joy in it. I really leap inside when I have assignment to come to the promised land. Yeah, yeah. Promised land. I'm so happy yeah. and so grateful yeah. that God has spared my life to see the promised land. Yeah. Thanks, it's a beautiful place. Yeah. I'm sure you already know. Amen. But I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord for all the blessings he's bestowed upon me. My health is not what I want it to be. Mm -hmm. But this thorn in my side is here for a reason. That's right. And I work through it right. in my praise. Yeah. I'm so grateful to, to have seen my son, the Amen. deacon, to come into Amen. the tabernacle. All right. Keep praying. Be praying. For all of those Be praying. who are, you know, whatever. I don't judge it. I just pray for it. I'm praying for my younger son to make his way here. But God's working on him. He's working on yours. He's working on mine. He's working on theirs. Thanking God for my daughter making a step. And she hasn't turned back. I'm so grateful for the grandchildren, the two of the seven who are here. I'm grateful for all. chance, along with us, to get right what God wants us to get right, right and do what we want. he wants us to do. I'm praying for all the sick and afflicted. My heart is heavy, yet it's light, all right. because I know God is in control, and I just pray that we're able to, we are able, that we comfort ourselves, knowing that God knows what he's doing. We have no control over in between. So I, I implore you to find yourself at a place that you would be happy with it being your last. I thank God for our, again, I thank God for our leader. Amen. He is something else, saints. Amen. He is something else. Amen. You can't ask him too much. Amen. He does so much and I'm just, I just look at him sometimes. <laughs> but I thank God I keep him my tongue when I pray. Amen. And his wife by his side. Amen. She is an awesome choice that he made. I'm grateful for the choice that he made. And St. Cherry, Cherry, praying for all who are in the need of prayer, standing in the need of prayer, please continue to pray my strength in the Lord. If the pains and the aches and the whatever don't go away, guess what? As long as I got another breath, I'm going to praise the Lord. That's right. Why? That's right. Because he's worthy. Saints, he's worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Please continue to pray with me. Amen. Oh. 
Queen Victoria Court, I was her only soprano. <laughs> and there was a time where I didn't want to sing, but I had a mother. <laughs> Whatever Virgil tells you to sing, you are going to sing. Or you're going to be sorry if you don't sing. You're in church. You know, we got to train our children. So. One of the people that works under Mr. Hoyer, he recognized, or Aunt Sage, he said, that's my mom. Well, he told Skinny Hoyer about it. And he came over to the table, introduced himself to St. Anthony. Saints, we never know. Never know. We never know. We never know. We got to be safe. Do your best. Yeah. Do that your best. Yeah.
We're thanking God for the testimony that's been brought forth. i turn the services back over to the chief. The saints, be encouraged, yeah. stay encouraged, yeah. and use your courage. Lord, we come before thee knowing that thou art God alone and beside thee we have no Savior, no Redeemer. You said to prophet Isaiah, I am the Lord and there is none else. And my glory I will not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. We come before thee, Lord, in this fashion, because we remember the, the words of King David when he said, One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that I may seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire into his temple. We come before thee, O Lord, because we know that thou hast promised us and your promises are sure. You said, Lord, you will bless us in the field and you will bless us in the city. Yes, yes. You said you will bless our basket and you said you will bless the fruit of our bodies. We thank thee, Lord, for we believe in thy words because thy words are as sure as the rock of ages. We pray for those that are mourning the loss of the loved ones. We pray that, Lord, be their comforter. We pray for those that are afflicted bodily, that, Lord, you may be their healer because we know that nothing shall be impossible unto you. And Jesus taught us that it shall come to pass that before we call, you will answer. And while we are yet speaking, you will hear. We thank you, Lord, for sending us your son, Jesus Christ, who died in the cross for us. We thank thee, Lord, for you have allowed us another opportunity to come and serve thee and serve thee alone. And we will pray according to the book of St. Matthew, the 6th chapter, the 9th through the 14th verse,
Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. Thank you. 
Drowned in the great sea Beneath faith I can see The children of Israel March on to victory By faith I can see Pharaoh and his host Drowned in the great sea The children of Israel Marching out of Egypt land As they journey to the promised land Can't you the children of Israel marching out of Egypt land as they journeyed to the promised land. Ye children of Israel marching out of Egypt land as they journeyed to the promised land. The children of Israel marching out of Egypt land as they journeyed to the promised land. See by faith. Can't you see by faith? Can't you see by faith? Can't you see? Marching out of Egypt land, as they journey 
to the promised land. service thus far. The songs have been beautiful. The testimonies are wonderful. The marching of the choir has been stupendous. Singing, shouting, and praising the Lord shall be our labor for this week. And we have been having a wonderful time. But we have come now to the most important part of the service. Singing and shouting is good, but there must be a word that comes to us. And in the house today, we do have a preacher. Amen. While the choir is being refreshed and some of the saints are moving about, we want to hurry and gather ourselves so that we can prepare for the preaching of God's word. Give me something short, please, while we are asking the deacons to gather all the saints to come in from the outside to hear what thus saith the Lord. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
could have took off right there. My, my, lead me to that rock. We have a preacher that's about to lead us to that rock that is higher than I. Why do we want to go to that rock? For thou has been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemies. Amen. While everyone is again being seated and we do not desire that anyone walk during the preaching of God's word let us now prepare our hearts and minds to hear what thus saith the Lord. Amen. In the house we have a need that only the word of God can bring the answers to. There is a need for a briefing with God. Sitting at the table of this briefing is the general secretary of the church. The general secretary of the church 
contributes actively to the implementation and responsibility of protecting the integrity and principles of our doctrine. He is in constant briefing, communication with the leader, the chairman of the board, and the saints of Christ to bring about an awareness of what the church calls for, where the church is heading, but most of all, what thus saith the Lord. His role is to act on behalf of the human rights, prevention of harm and danger to the integrity of the church. His voice is the voice of the Constitution, the doctrine, and the leadership. In principle, when he mandates, his mandate comes through the office of headship, the leader. So when he speaks, he's not speaking of himself. He's speaking on behalf of our leader. But in this moment, when he speaks, he's speaking on behalf of the Holy Ghost. He is a father. He is a loving, faithful, wonderful, obedient husband. Sometimes I can't even I can't even call him at night sometime. He just lets the phone ring. I know that's the grandmother Sarah saying, don't answer that. <laughs> I thank God for this moment because if he didn't get a chance to express himself and preach, I would have to listen to him for the next two weeks when we get home. So I want him to get it all out right now. He's a loving brother. Yes, he is. Amen. I don't have many friends, but this man is one that sticketh closer than a brother. If I had a brother, my sister treated me like I was, like she was my big brother, but she was my big sister. But if I had a brother, I would want a man like this to call my brother. We've shared moments where we've cried, where we've prayed, where we've encouraged one another. We've been a leaning post where we fussed, where we've argued, and where we've always come back together because of the love of Christ that abides in our hearts. It is my pleasure to present to you now to preach the word of God to us and to give us what the Lord has laid on his heart and as he has labored to hear the Lord speak in his heart none other than our pastor in the great state the garden state New Jersey Newark New Jersey all the way from Jersey Temple our general secretary of the church and also the former GIO of the church, the one who has us on YouTube, the one who has us on Zoom, the one who has put the website and, and those videos that we see and, and the opening up of uh, the promised land. This man's responsible for it all. I believe the Lord is going to speak through him today. Son, I say preach the word. Be in season, out of season. Always proclaiming what thus saith the Lord. I give to you now, Evangelist James Alvin Cook, hear ye him.
celebrate Come is there any witnesses I have lift up everybody my eyes to the hill Come my head to the hill come back my hand 
not alone. Everybody. Can we give the Lord some praise in this place? With Jesus, I'm not alone. His strength is made perfect in weakness. Thank you for that lovely song. Church of God and saints of Christ. True, the Lord is good and he's worthy to be praised. I want to thank the Lord just for his presence in the house of the Lord. I want to acknowledge and recognize our senior bishop, Amen. Bishop C.L. Hendricks. Amen. Can we praise God? For the leader. Oh, you can do better than that. I said this is our Joshua. I want to acknowledge our chancellor, Bishop Frank G. Henson. Come on, y'all celebrate. We have two bishops. In the house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to acknowledge our chief of the pulpits. Our chief. There was a moment. Just a brief moment, I didn't think I would be able to stand here because I got caught up in some tears. You heard our chief said on uh, last evening that, you know, we begin to come, you know, vulnerable and get, become, you know, sad and, and emotional as we have gotten older. And I, I shared that with Evangelist Marshall as we continue to, as we continue to get older we're sensitive to the things of God. And you, and, and you wonder why Jesus said, Jesus wept. And, and because we carry so much for the people of God. I acknowledge our chairman of the board, evangelist at large, Israel Natoo. To every evangelist, to the elders, to the deacons, to the sister elders, to every national and general officer, to also want us to acknowledge in his absence our grandfather Abraham, Amen. evangelist Marcus Hammonds. 
letting him know if he's watching that we're praying for him. Amen. Also want to give greetings to Pastor Marty and, and Pastor Kim. Let's praise God for them. Also want to give greetings to Elder Sabonia Nyla, all the way from South Africa. <laughs> to our friends and family, to all those that are on YouTube and Zoom, I welcome you to the church where people Save matter. Them. This is the place to be, and we thank the Lord just Amen. for his presence. I want to say a couple of things before I go into the word of God. I want to also, I want to thank the, the, the powerful word, thank this individual for starting off this memorial of the Feast of the Lord's Passover and Days of Unleavened Bread. I want to praise God for Evangelist Oliver Gamble. <laughs> saying that this is our exodus. What a word. What a word. So if, if it doesn't come off cross today, you can always go back to the first day. I share with the bishop, it's too late now to turn back now. But also want to just to thank the Lord just for the saints of the New Jersey Temple. I praise God for all of the saints of the New Jersey Temple for your support. I personally want to thank my family, starting with my wife. The grandmother, Sarah. We just celebrated 21 years of marriage. I will do it all over again. Marriage is honorable, young people. I want to thank the Lord for her. I also want to thank the Lord for my children. Oh, I thank the Lord for my children. I also want to thank the Lord for my mother, for being in the land of the living. I'm not at a loss of words. My wife would tell you that. Chief Wade would tell you that. But I just want to also, just missing my grandmother this, this morning. But I thank the Lord that my grandmother was able to make it to the promised land. She made it to the promised land. So the first chance I get, I'm going to put a picture out there in that fellowship hall, in that room out there. Oh, I'm putting a picture. She made it. She couldn't see, but she saw the promised land. She made it to the promised land. There's so much that's going on around us. And I just want to share just a word of encouragement right, with sir. you this morning. We thank the Lord for the leader, for theming this year, that this is the year to soar. Yeah. And so I'm going to also piggyback off of that this morning. Can you turn with me to Isaiah, the 43rd chapter? All right. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 
And I want to begin, and can we, for reverence of the word of God, I pray that you begin just to read your word, Isaiah 43. I'll begin at verse 1, and I'll skip around. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. Someone say, fear not. For I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall a flames kindle upon thee. We'll skip down to verse 5. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. Skip down to verse 18. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, someone say behold. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Father, right now, come into this place right now called sanctuary. Touch all of those from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, Lord. Pave the way for them to receive this word. I pray that whatever question they may have, you're answering it today. I pray that you wrap your arms of protection around them today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want to use as a subject this afternoon... Bishop, from the sore to the sore. From the sore to the sore. In this new season of my life, I got to make a move. Can you do me a favor and touch your neighbor next to me and say, neighbor? neighbor. Oh, neighbor. You got to ship from the shore to the sore. I got to shift from the sore, S O R E, to the sore, S O A R. Let's make it a little personal. Touch your neighbor next to you and look them in the eyes and say, You got to shift from the sore to the sore. Can you touch the other neighbor and say, I know that's right. I feel, I feel an atmosphere in here today. I'm asking the spirit of the Lord to fall afresh on me. There's something different. Something is going on today. And so when the spirit of the Lord is dwelling upon us, you better grab it. Family, one of the most unpleasant feelings in the world is getting a sore. In fact, for me, I dislike sores with a passion. First of all, sores are painful and irritating. Let me ask my young JG athletes a few questions. Have you ever received a sore while playing football? Is there any JG athletes in the house? 
Have you ever received a sore while playing basketball? Have you ever received a sore while playing volleyball? Have you ever received a sore while competing in track or doing cheer or dance? It's almost a guarantee that we're all going to receive a sore. But you don't have to be an athlete to receive a sore. You can fall off a bike, you can trip and fall while walking, or simply rub up against something that can cause you a sore. I won't tell you the amount of times I received a sore and can't remember where I got it from. Do I have a witness in here? Sores hurt, plain and simple. And what makes them even worse is how un unexpected they are. Sores, whether physical, emotional, or spiritual, often catches us off guard precisely because it's not something we plan for or expect. It's one of those inevitable aspects of life that we simply have to deal with as they arrive. Back in the day, brothers and sisters, if I was over my grandparents' house and one of my siblings or cousins had an accident that caused them to bleed, my grandmother would go into the the bathroom and, and, and bring out a band-aid and, and, and then not only would she get a band-aid, she would get the green alcohol I call the green hawk. She never used Neosporum. As a child, I'm just going to be honest with you, I, I used to laugh at the expression because of the burning and stinging sensation. I'm being honest with you, I used to laugh at my siblings or my cousin when something like that happened. Once my grandmother applied the disinfection on the wound. It was always funny. Until the role reversed. And the same thing happened to me. It's never funny when you experience walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Young people, life will knock you down. You will get sores along this journey called life. And life has a funny way of throwing curveballs whether it's a sudden loss, a betrayal, a crisis of faith that leaves us feeling sore and vulnerable. Sores hurt. And, and some sores, I, I can't just put a band-aid on. Some sores don't, don't go away easily. How can I navigate the feelings of loss and grief after the end of a significant relationship. How can I process and heal from a trauma of a past abusive relationship or my childhood experience? How can I manage the overwhelming emotions and challenges of caring for a loved one with a chronic illness or a disability? What do, you do what do you do when the source of life happens? Well, stuff that you never planned for and, and your world was flipped upside down. The rug was, was snatched from underneath you, leaving you feeling as though you want to hide under a rock or quit or want to commit suicide, leaving you with the broken pieces. Life often confronts us 
with challenges and struggles that can leave us feeling overwhelmed, defeated, and victimized. We may find ourselves encountering various forms of soreness. Think about the pain or regret of a broken relationship, the guilty conscience, the sting of disappointment, or the ache of, of an unfulfilled dream. We can find ourselves trapped in a cycle of pain and despair, unable to, be, to, to see beyond our circumstances. In these moments, it can, easy, can be easy to lose sight of God's presence and power in our lives. We may question his goodness and wonder if he has abandoned us in our time of need. Yet, even in the midst of our darkest moments, there lies a message of hope and renewal. Amen. Can you do me a favor and touch your neighbor next to you and say, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. I know it's hard, but don't lose hope. I know you have cried many tears. That's okay. Don't lose hope. In Isaiah 43, the prophet Isaiah addressed the Israelite during one of the challenging periods in their history. The context of the scripture involves the Babylonian exile, a time when the Israelites were forcibly evicted from their homeland and faced the harsh reality of captivity in a foreign land. They're not home, y'all. That, that period was marked by despair, suffering, and a sense of spiritual disconnection as the Israelites grappled with the consequences of their disobedience to God. I can imagine now, that's one of the reasons why Israel in scriptures was, was singing, they would say, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Come on, can you be honest? Let's make it personal. When we're going through our life, how can we sing a song when I'm dealing with pain? How can I sing the Lord's song when there's hell breaking loose in my life? How can I sing the Lord's song in a strange land? He reassures the Israelites of God's, talking about Isaiah, of God's unwavering love and faithfulness promising to redeem them and bring them back to their home. The prophet Isaiah offers us a road map from the sore to the sore, showing us how to transcend our pain and find strength in the midst of adversity. A first step from sore to the sore, from the S-O-R-E to the S-O-A-R, is that we have to fully embrace God's promises. Can you do me a favor and touch your neighbor next to you and say, hold on, hold on. to God's promises. We're reminded that God has called us by name. And when we pass through the waters, he will be with us. Amen. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm us. Our first step in moving from soreness to soar is fully holding on to God's promises. We must trust that he will be with us, guiding us and giving us the strength to endure all of our obstacles. Yes, can you touch your neighbor next to you and say, you got to hold on, hold on. 
to God's promises, no matter what. You got to trust God. Mm, thank you, Gore. You got to trust God when things are not going right in my life. You got to trust God. Trusting in God promises require us, requires an unshakable faith in his presence and provision. We can find comfort in knowing that God has called us by name and is intimately acquainted with every aspect of our lives. When we hold on to God's promises, it empowers us to face trials with courage and perseverance. Just as God assures us that the waters will not overwhelm us, we are reminded of his steadfast presence in every circumstance. When we hold on to God's promises, it enables us to draw upon his strength in times of weakness. And there will be moments in your life that you will get weak. Okay. Minister, I'm the only one that get weak. To my right, are you the only ones that get weak? We all go through life journey. We all have moments of weakness. We all have trying times that you will lose sleep at night. That no matter what you go through, that you don't have nobody to call because they're sleeping. But thanks be to God. That you can go to God in your time of need. I thank God that God don't have an eight to five like I do. Oh, because there's moments in life that we need God. By holding on to God's promises and trusting in his love, we can find the strength to overcome any obstacles that come our way. If you want to soar, you have to hold on to God's promises. Touch your neighbor again and say, you got to hold on to God's promises. God is the source of our strength. God is our protector. God is our guide. He will never leave us or forsake us. His promises to be with us always, even into the end of the world. That promise provides us with the assurance that we are never alone. Even in the midst We have to trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him. Someone say acknowledge him. And he will direct thy path. Uh, touch your neighbor again and say, hold on to God's promises. The second thing that we learn from prophet Isaiah is that we have to let go of the past. Can you do me a favor and touch your neighbor next to you and say, you got to let it go. The, the, the past should only be used as a reference, not as a residence. Isaiah tells us, urging us, verse 18, 19, urge us to forget the former things. 
and not dwell on the past. For God is doing a new thing. I said he's doing a new thing. To soar, we must release the burdens of our past, the mistakes that weigh us down, and the pain that hold us captive. Letting go of the, of the past is crucial for finding strength because it frees us from the burden and limitation that holds us back. By releasing the mistakes, by releasing the pain, by releasing the regrets of the past, we create a space for the growth and new opportunities. This enables us to focus on the present moments and embrace the possibility that lie ahead, empowering us to soar, Bishop, to new heights. God offers us a fresh start and a new beginning. If only we are willing to let go and embrace his power, we must accept that God has a plan for our lives and that he desires to restore our hope and joy in him. We must trust in his faithfulness to bring about his best for us. With the past behind us, we can move forward in freedom and confidence. Letting go of the past allows us to embrace the possibility of the future. We have been, some of us have been in the same place for a long time. We've been roaming around in the same place for 40 years, still holding on to things that have broke us down. The hurt and the pain that it kept us in the same place. And because of the pain that we did not let go, it became perpetual because it's starting to pour down in my children. And so when our, our, our family is fighting one another and, the, and those that are before us die and they're arguing over something that's so frivolous, they don't even know the real story of what was going on in their lives. Small beefs, things that don't matter to anybody. Somebody say, let it go. If you're trying to soar, you gotta let it go. Because when you're trying to soar, you can't have a heavy weight on you. You got to let the weight, the thief that's going to hold you back. God wants praise and worship. God wants to get breakthrough in your life, but you're still holding on to some things. How often God wants to bless you. He wants to open up a window of heaven, pour you out a, a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive, but you're holding on to something, and those windows are closed. Those windows are closed. You got to let it go. Someone say you got to let it go. And not only that, it's funny because I joked around earlier about the fact that when my siblings and my cousin would get, had to go to, to my grandmother, they had to get a Band-Aid. Yeah. And, and then they had to get the green alcohol, Cousin Andre, and, 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 and not only that, but now, my grandmother and my mother, they, 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 they used to always do this. That after a while, Bishop, the, 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 the wound or the, the scar becomes a scab. That's right, yeah. Yeah. that's right, that's right. And, 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 and something happens when it becomes a scab, right? And you know when it comes a scab, it itches, 
it's irritating, but you still can't bother it. And there have been moments in life that we are still trying to pick at the sky. Oh, Grandma, you should just go ahead and just tap the hand. Leave that so alone, baby. It'll get better. It'll get better. But we're still living with the open wound because we're not allowing it, not allowing it to heal. Come on, we gotta let it. See. I know it itches. I know it looks ugly. But there are moments of our life that the problems make us look ugly, the, the trauma that we experience, but it still gotta heal. I still have to go through some things. It's just a scab. We've been living in the past trying to live in the present trying to live for the future but we're living with an affection don't you know that when you have an open wound that if you don't do anything about it guess what it'll cause an infection and when you get an affection, it will cause pain in your life it'll cause you to affect everyone around you It'll smell. Do you know anybody got a, a smelly attitude? Do you know somebody that don't look right? They look at you because they're still dealing with an open wound. Every time you see somebody, they got an attitude. You wonder what's going on in their life. Guess what? It's because they have an open wound. Somebody shout, let it, let it go. How often has God tried to bless us? Tried to bless us. And, 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 and we keep putting things on our lives. The scabs of the past must be allowed to fall off. You can't force a scab because when you do it, you will mess things up. Haven't you known when you messed up and you start doing things on your own, all you did was delay the inevitable? Somebody shout, let it go. You got to stop picking at the scab and, 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 and let it heal. But spiritually, I, I need to let the scabs heal. And, and so I so that means that when I have a scab, I can't focus on grudges. I gotta let it heal. I gotta let it heal. But I ought it'll only be open when I allow things to hold me back. Come on, someone shout again, let it go. How often has God tried to bless us? We must be willing to surrender our will and trust in God's plan for our lives. We must be willing to forgive and make peace with the past, S-O-R-E, in order to move forward, S-O-A-R. I said we have to forgive and make peace with the past. You can't change. I said it, it can only be used as a reference, not as a residence. Are you hearing me? And how often do we want to live in the past? Third thing, take my seat, that we have to learn 
in order to shift from the sore to the sore, we have to walk in faith, not in fear. Let me say that again. I said walk in faith, not in fear. Isaiah 43 verse 5 encourages us not to fear. For God is with us. To soar we must walk by faith and not by sight. To soar we must walk in faith not allowing fear to dictate our actions or decisions. Instead, we must trust God knowing that he holds our future in his hands. With faith as our foundation, we can rise above circumstances and soar to new heights. God commands us to be strong and courageous. I believe that's the JG's anthem. God command us to be strong and courageous. Despite the trials and tribulations we face, God reassures us saying, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. This journey is not about the destination, Bishop Henson, but rather about the process of trusting in God's provision and protection along the way. He always will be there to provide comfort and guidance even in the midst of our struggle. There will be struggles along the way. But you have to have a little courage. Can you touch your neighbor next to you and say you just have to have a little courage. And courage plays a vital role in maintaining faith during challenging moments. It allows us to face our fears and doubts head on, knowing that God is with us every step of the way. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as a constrict spirits, but those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall walk, run, and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. My grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in my weakness. Thank you. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Casting all your cares upon him. He cares for you. James said, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall in various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Can we give God praise for what the Lord has done? You've been living in pain far too long. And God is trying to bless you. I thank God. Because Jesus, Bishop, had sores on his life. I said Jesus had sores 
when he was in the garden of Gethsemane when he was overwhelmed to the point of death and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground but Jesus said not my will but your will be done I said Jesus had some sores when he was beaten and whipped but he kept on going not my will but your will be done Jesus had sores when they put a crown of thorns on his head but he kept on going can you touch your neighbor next to you and say keep on going Jesus had sores when they put him on a cross. Jesus had sores in his hands, sores in his feet. But Jesus took those sores for my life. Touch your neighbor next to you and say he took the sore for me. I said he did it for me. Jesus took the sore of sin upon his life. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Jesus had sores of humiliation but guess what he kept on going it wasn't the nails that held him to a cross but it was love it was love that lifted me I said it was love that kept me it was love that brought me out it was love that kept me it was love I said it was love. Our love lifted me when nobody else. Uh, it was love. Sweet joy love. I uh, thank you because we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the healing feeling of our infirmity but was in all points tempted just like us yet without sin this same Jesus that went through the same thing as you and me I said he got knocked down but guess what he got back up and so if he got knocked down you can't get back up you better shout right now now, give God the glory, give God the praise, open your mouth and tell the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, it's time to soar, touch your neighbor next to you and say you better soar, somebody say soar baby soar, soar baby soar, this is going to be a new year. This is going to be a new Passover. This is going to be a new opportunity. For Christ, our Passover, has sacrificed for us. Therefore, we will celebrate not with the old leaven. The stuff that kept us bound. The stuff that kept us back in the day. The stuff that would kill us. I said we come to celebrate the days of unleavened bread. I know we go through problems. Ah, oh, but Christ came. He has helped us in our need, time of needs. Oh, I feel a spirit in this place that when afflictions come, I will serve the Lord. And when persecution rise, I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to let God arise. I'm going to let God arise within my soul. Did you come to celebrate at this Passover? We can't let this moment be wasted. This moment has to be made into a movement. We got to take advantage of this time. 
Some of us. I said we're trying to shift from the sore to sore. And we got to be careful that we don't give sores, S-O-R-E, to other people. God is, is calling someone right now. And he wants everyone. I, I, need, I need all my I need all my young people to stand. All my young men. All, young ladies, young women. There's a, the world in which we live in is trying, the, the, the enemy is trying to destroy your generation. The enemy want to destroy your life. And if he can use different situations and social media and enemies in your life, he will kill an entire generation. And so I speak life over your life in the name of Jesus. That there's no weapon that's formed against you will be able to prosper. It won't work. There won't be any pregnancies. There won't be any death. There won't be any drugs. There won't be any vapes. He wants to destroy your life. And some of you at time is just going through the motions as though tomorrow is promise it's not promise people are dying every day They want you to leave the church. The world is trying to recruit you. But I rebuke the enemy's hand in the name of Jesus. No longer can we sit down. No longer can we stand. No longer. No longer. No longer. No longer. There's no quit. There's no quit in us. I said there's no quit in us. There's no quit in us.
Talk to him. Talk to him. Thank you, brother. The enemy's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. He's trying to break up this unity where we are right now. But I rebuke the enemy's hand in the name of Jesus. I need my young people to call on the name of Jesus. I know you might hear all kind of names, but in this church, with us and this leader, I need you to open up your mouth right now and say, Jesus. Jesus. Don't be afraid. I need all my young people to say, Jesus. Because it's going to come a point in your life that you're not going to be able to rely on your parents. You're not going to be able to rely on your friends. You're only going to be able to rely on God. The Lord is calling some right now. Amen. I don't know if you have a relationship with the Lord. He's calling you right now. He's knocking on the door of your heart. I, need, I don't need you to harden your heart. I need you to lift up those gates and let the king of glory come in. Father God, in the name of Jesus, touch our young people right now from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. I'm praying power. I'm praying victory. Lord, touch their hearts right now. Send angels charge over their lives. Allow the angels to sit there as bodyguards to protect them when intruders are trying to come in their way. Those angels come, block the drugs, block the alcohol, block those people trying to bring them down. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My God, my God. Young people, the reason why your parents are telling you certain things, they see things you don't see. They've been your age before. And some of them are trying to protect you from trying to make the same mistakes that they've made. All of you are a child of God. All of you. All of you. All of you. You are a child of God. Amen. You are a child of God. You are a child of the King. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. I said you are a child of God. You're not a child of the enemy. You're not a child of the devil. You are a child of the most high God. You are not a you're not an ingrate. You're not a loser. You are a winner. I said you're a winner.
Amen. Don't let the enemy steal your joy, yes, Lord. your happiness. You have to give your life over to God. And I'm just going to be real honest with you. There really is no maybe. There's either yes or no. I got to be honest. There's no maybe. There's a yes for God or there's a, there's a yes for God or there's a no for the end. You have to just give your life over yes, sir. to the Lord. Are you hearing me? Read, sir. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Who needs prayer? No, I need all my ministers, everyone. Just touch our young people right now. Amen. Amen. Right now, right now. Amen. Come on. Just lay your hands on our young youth. This is a generation. This is not the forgotten group. I said this is not the forgotten group. This is the church. There's chains falling off. In this atmosphere, we just say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the essence of the Holy Spirit fill this space in this sanctuary. Yes, sir. And say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love. Yes. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Lord, we love. Lord, we love. Lord, we love you. Oh yes, oh yes. Lord, we love. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. In this moment, the preacher just preached to us, convicting and touching the hearts of not only our young people, but also us. We don't want this moment to pass by and it just be reduced to prayer of deliverance. I believe life-changing moments is happening. I need some prayer warriors to push this. There's some life-changing moments happening right now. They can't wait for tomorrow. They can't wait for next week. We need someone that's sitting next to a young person that just got prayed for. Ask them this question. Has your answer changed to a yes? Do you want to say yes to the Lord today? Right, right now. Come on. Help, help, help me out here. If you're sitting next to a young person... This isn't about pity, Pat. We come just for this one thing, to save souls. 
And if you're sitting next to that young person, and if the answer is yes, you help them walk down this aisle to accept Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And they know today they are saved. Come on, who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? There's somebody here. You didn't walk down here for no reason. The word convicted you to a life-changing substance to say, what must I do to be saved? And it's as easy as the confessing with your mouth, believing in your heart, that God hath raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. Has your answer changed to a yes? All on Bishop. Need you to be praying. There's one. There's one. There's one. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. There's another one. There's another one. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody else is in here. Somebody else is in here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, we do. Come on, there's someone else. And maybe you're not categorized as a young person. There's another one, come on. But if you're an adult, and you're not growing where you're going, come on, step out in the aisle, come on down and accept God, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, Lord, we adore. One more time, Chief, one more time. We to stop. I'm, I'm trying to stop, but I, but I hear Evangelist Hendricks pushing me saying, call them hard and long. I, I know there's more people, not just young people, that came here today and you want to change your life around. You don't come here year after year and want to leave the same way. There, there's someone on both sides of this church. The Spirit has already spoke to me who they are. Has your answer changed to yes? I wouldn't wait till another calamity happens. Don't wait for a loved one to slip away from here. Let them see your life change right now. I see you. You're going back and forth in your mind. Do I do it now or can I wait? Can I talk to them on the side? Make your confession of faith right now. Come on, I need somebody to encourage someone. Ask them, sit next. Is he talking to you? There's somebody else. Come on, is, is he talking to you? Bring him to the old side. Don't let the sore stop you from soaring. That's right. That's right. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Ah. We're going to sing it one more time. We're going to sing it one more time. Let's take it up just a little bit. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Let's, on this last time, let's all stand. We don't want to make this intimidating. Now you're already halfway there. If that's you, my brother or my sister, that said, guess what? I, I want to give God a chance. Come on, I see you walking. I see you walking. I've tried everything else. 
And I want to give the Lord another chance. Come on, come on, come on. If that's you, my brother or my sister, accept Christ right now in your life. Come on, come on. Somebody's walking. Somebody's walking. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love. Come on, let's all sing it out. Sing it from your heart. Lord, we love you. Yeah, Lord. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love. Yes, sir. Call him, call him, sir. Lord, we love you. Come on, I see you walking. I see you walking. I see you walking. We love. Come on, church ought to be celebrating. Church ought to be celebrating. Lord, we And open your mouth and give him of the fruit of your lips. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Yes. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord for all of his blessings towards the children of men. We have these individuals that have made this walk. Don't sit down. We want to make them comfortable. Let's yes, stand sir. with them. Yes, sir. We're going to stand with them all the way. Amen. What made these individuals walk need the ministers to just help us out just a little bit? Yes. Well, actually, um, <laughs> I would just like to give my life to Christ. Um, I went to the Mercy Sea like a week ago in Connecticut. I'm just trying to get baptized, seal the deal with God, give my life to him. Amen. No one will. Amen. Amen. Brother Tristan, do you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes. That makes you a candidate for baptism. Thank you. In the Church of God and Saints of Christ, we'll get you in contact with the secretary and your parents. So we can follow up with you with the next steps in the phase of Amen. your baptism, your baptism journey. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate God for Brother Tristan and his confession. What made you walk St. Booby? That's all right. We're here for you. Just want you to know that you're a family. That's right. And you belong here. Amen. You belong here. You have a place here. You and your daughter have a place here. Amen. Amen. And at any point that you need to talk, at any point you decide you want to make any different decisions, you belong here. You, no matter what your decisions, you belong with us, and you're always welcome here. And I pray that you continue to feel the presence of a promised land here. Just so glad to be here with my family. Um, uh, I'm 
glad to be here and give my life over to God. That's right. I know that. Yeah. Because I know there is nothing that he cannot do. Come on. And I know there's nothing that he will not do for me and my family. And I pray he continue to watch over us. Yes. Amen. I desire to be a member of the church. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let the church say amen. 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 Well, that makes you a candidate for baptism. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead? Amen. Well, thank the Lord. Another believer has come to the house of the Lord. Amen. To rejoice. And we're going to get with you after this. And we're going to make sure that we go through the proper steps. In Amen. our Sabbath school and making sure that our pre-baptism classes go forth and you will be baptized in a very short time Amen. according Amen. to the wishes of you and your mother. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. I'm glad to be here and become a member of the church and give my life over to God. Wow. Wow. Oh, amen, amen. Come on, we can clap our hands and do better than that. Amen. All these souls giving their life to the Lord. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Amen. And do you believe that God raised him from the dead? Amen. That makes her a candidate for baptism, church. Come on, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Amen. We had prayer with them already. We're so happy to see you. What's your name? Robin. Robin, thank you for coming up. Did someone pray for you already? Amen. Well, we're grateful to see you. Amen. We're praying for you and your parents. Amen. We're praying for you and your parents. We prayed for them. Did you want to say something? Amen. Oh, when you asked, when the preacher asked if it was a yes, no, or maybe, it's always been yes for me. I'm already in the works of getting baptized at my own church yeah. because a year ago I wasn't gonna be here. It was real dark for a while. Life got real difficult. I felt alone because I didn't know anybody else who went through it like I did. It felt like nobody was there for me, but he was, God was, and I learned that I can't do life alone, and I don't want to do it alone. That's why I decided to turn to God a while ago. Beautiful. Beautiful. I do want to say thank y'all for welcoming me, though. Thank y'all. My, I am from a Baptist church, actually, with my great-grandmother, Valerie. Yeah. She will be happy that I'm here. So thank y'all for welcoming me. Amen. Amen. St. Deidre's granddaughter. Amen. And what's your name? My name is Lanaya. Lanaya. Oh, we're going to put our arms around Sister Lanaya at this time. And we're going to let her know we're going to continue praying for you. And we're going to continue keeping you lifted up because you're not in this. Amen. We're here with you. Your church home will be with you. But you always have a place here in the promised land. Amen. Amen. We are your family. Amen. 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 Was there anyone else that wanted to say something here? I'm trying to get my life open. Yeah. Amen. I believe that. What's your name, young man? Savior. Savior. Amen. You are already a candidate for baptism. Is that right? Amen. Amen. So we're going to communicate with your pastor. Come on, put your hands together. We're going to communicate with your pastor and make sure that we're taking the proper steps. I believe, St. Kelly, we went through the pre-baptism with Brother Xavier already. Amen. So. I want to turn my life around and give it to God. Amen. Do you want to be baptized? 
Yes, yeah, she said yes. Amen. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe that he died on the cross for you and he rose again? Amen. Well, that makes her a candidate for baptism. And we have to go through our baptism classes and then we will make ready for you to be baptized. Amen. 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 I'm already baptized, but I would like to use this moment as a reconnect. Um, last year was like the hardest year I've ever went through. Um, it's been hard. <laughs> But I'm learning this year <laughs> to hold on. <laughs> Don't give up. <laughs> because when you give up, <laughs> it's over. <laughs> and the devil can come in so easy. And if you let him, he will. So I want to use this as a reconnect. <laughs> I've, always, I've always known that Christ was the way. I've always known. It's just, it's been hard, but I'm getting through it. And my family has got my back, and God's got my back. And I'm going to get through it. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Amen. What's your name? Donalea. Donalea. And what city are you from? Richmond. Well, Sister Donalea, you already received back into the church because of your confession. And because of this testimony. And we want Amen. you to know that we love you and we surround you with love and we welcome you back in. And this is your reconnect moment. Amen. Right. You are connected now. Amen. Amen. You are plugged up to the power source. And anything you need, we are here for you. Amen. 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 God bless you this, this, this afternoon. Is there someone else? I would just like to give my life to Jesus Christ. David. Brother David. Amen. Someone say amen. Amen. I am so proud this this young man right here. Faithful young man. Always willing to serve. Brother David, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Amen. And do you believe that God raised him from the dead? That makes you a candidate for baptism. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm grateful to be here, and I've come here for prayer. We're going to pray for him. Father, yes, we thank you for this opportunity to pray. We ask that you would continue to bless this young man yes, sir. as he grows and matures in his faith. As he continues to be a faithful servant to you and to the church, continue to rear him in the word of God, that the wonderful, glorious things that you have prepared for him, they will prosper and they will come to fruition. Father, continue to surround him with your angels as he goes to and fro in the world. And continue to keep his mind that he is not trapped by the enemy and lost by his tactics. So, Father, we cover him now with the word. We cover him in the blood. Yeah. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, I want my own relationship with God. Amen. I want to be 100% confident in my faith to him. And it's so important to me that I'm the best example for my, my baby sister, Megan. Naomi, that's right. Sister Naomi, and is your desire to be baptized? It is. She said yes. Amen. I said, so therefore, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes. And do you believe that Christ was raised from the dead? Yes. Amen. That makes her a candidate for baptism. Come on, we ought to celebrate. We ought to celebrate. We ought to celebrate. God is doing some wonderful things in this church. God is doing some wonderful things in this church. Glory be to God. We ask the choir to sing while these young people go back to their seats. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Amen. Let me say this. We are so grateful for everyone that came today. We're grateful to the Lord that he moved you because Amen. this was not of your own power. The Bible says that no one cometh to God unless he be drawn of God. And I want to, well, one of the young ladies were speaking, the Lord began to lay someone uh, on my heart. And I declare before the end of this week that we are going to meet and we're going to make sure that there is a hotline that we can reach out to when people are feeling like they can't make it anymore that they're ready to give up and the Lord laid on my heart St. Kelly and St. Ebony why I don't know but I know St. Kelly to be uh, a teacher and I know her to be a prayer warrior I know St. Ebony to be quiet but I know that she's very gifted and in tune with the spirit of the Lord now, there may be others that I'm just not aware of or the Lord didn't lay on my heart. That doesn't mean you're not here. However, I want to make sure that before the end of the week that the general secretary can announce that there is a line or that there is a contact that someone, our young people, can call when they're in crisis, when they feel like they don't have anyone to talk to, when they feel like it's just not working out. I would rather someone call you, even though you feel like you're not the person to be called, than for them to say, let me take these pills. I, I would rather someone call than someone take a gun and decide that it would be easier if I just pulled this trigger. We had someone that done that just before we came here. Life just was too much to handle any longer. And I wish there had been someone they could have reached out to to hold on just a little while longer. Amen. Have you been through trouble before? Did you feel like there was no one you could turn to? It was only the grace of God that allowed you to make it to today. It was God's mercy that allowed you to stand here today. And so I'm going to make sure somehow, some way that we come up with a plan that when people feel like that young lady said that she was walking by herself, that we know that you're not walking alone. We make sure you're not walking alone. Because this is a church where... Mm, right. The church where we all matter here. And so I want to make sure that we do that. We're going to make sure that we get in contact with all those names that decided they want to give their life to the Lord. We will go through our baptism classes and then we will go down into the water, trouble the water, and the soul will be baptized into the faith. Amen. We, we have just one more thing to do before we let you go. We have to serve the body and blood of Jesus Christ. That must be done every day. As the deacons begin to prepare the table, I want to say to you that this is why it's so important. We are here in seven days 
of unleavened bread. Now, I'm not going to take long, but I'm going to give it to you because you need it. Seven days of unleavened bread does not mean seven days where we're not eating leavened bread. Amen. We are in a celebration for seven days of the unleavened bread. Jesus said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. We are celebrating the fact that Jesus was that unleavened bread, the sinless lamb of God that suffered and died on the cross. And while we came to memorialize the Egypt experience, we are here celebrating the fact that Christ is our Passover. And he says, as often as you do this, you do show forth my death and suffering until I come. Do this in remembrance of me. So for seven days, we must partake. The Bible says that it shall be a statue forever. And we are continuing in that statue by partaking of the blood and the lamb. This lamb, the lamb of God, that taketh away the sins of the world.
one more. May we have the announcements by St. Janelle, please. We thank the Lord for the serving of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God for his sacrifice, for without it we would be lost today. So we thank the Lord for this, the sacrament of Jesus Christ. And to the Church of God of Christ, these are the announcements for today. Um, at the bishop's table will be Bishop and First Lady, Elder Nala, Bishop Henson, Sister Elder Roach, Evangelist Marshall, uh, Evangelist Marshall, St. Stephanie Marshall, Evangelist Daly, and St. Akia Daly. The Welcome slash Registration Committee is having a raffle for seniors 65 and older only. It's, a, it's for a one night stay at either the Homewood or the residence. It can be used for this day or another in the future. Seniors, we will put your name in a drawing and pick two names on April 18th and the winners will be announced that day. The Home and Foreign Mission have calendars, which will be given out today by St. Juanita Crockett, um, the Welcome Committee. Only one calendar will be given per family. If we have extras, we will give accordingly. The senior room is for those who cannot or do not want to go downstairs. Capacity is eight. St. Myrtle Stalling, St. Barbara Barnett, St. Lynette Vaughn, St. Sherry Hunt, St. Beverly Jeffries, St. Juanita Rogers, St. Sherry Wilson. If a senior's name was just called and for the senior room and they decline, someone else can take their spot. The Sentinel Committee would like to get new headshots of the bishops and the ministerial body today after we eat. This includes sister elders and deacons. Also, if you pre-ordered a book or would like to purchase the 2024 Passover Sentinel, St. Sissy has them and they are $20. The Grand Trustees are having a 50-50 raffle. Um, one ticket for $10, two for 15. The winner will be announced on April 19th after morning service. You can see any of the grand trustees, which would be myself. Um, Brother Ron Anderson is selling soul, soul food dinners. Um, there will be ham, fried chicken, ribs, greens, green beans, candied yams, potato salad, corn pudding, dessert, drinks, and macaroni and cheese. Um, the rib dinners are $25. Ham and chicken is $20. The address is here. You can see me after for the address. Um, and Richmond, Indiana and Grapevine, Texas will be in charge of cleaning the tabernacle today. Thank you. heard the announcements. Um, I wasn't able to focus after I heard about the macaroni and cheese and greens. So St. Janelle, can you make those announcements after service during lunch, please? One more time. Amen. All minds, hearts clear. Services tomorrow will be at 1045. Amen. Church say amen. 1045 in the morning. Concerning service this evening, we will not be back here for service. We are letting you have the rest of the evening to recuperate and to relax and to get yourselves together for a wonderful, powerful service on tomorrow. Amen. Shall we stand? May we have a song.
might of God. The might of God is great, there is none mightier, none godlier, none mightier, none godlier. Doom, 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 do